there we are. Well, hello and good morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Tim Marvel, and you are watching Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions, which is a production of the church that I serve, the Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. We are located uh, southwest of Detroit, so uh, you can't go too much beyond um, Detroit's borders without hitting uh, very close to where Allen Park is. We are downriver of Detroit. Uh, on the and um, so the whole area is called Down River, and that is where we are, kind of the north side of that Down River. We come to you every most I shouldn't say every most Mondays through Thursdays, most weeks. We get together here at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, live on our Facebook page for the church. You guys, the people that come in live, know about us, and uh, we do have a pretty significant morning following. It's kind of a good morning hello for them, in addition to what we do together in community, which is we talk about some of the news of the world and, 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 this, and our specific church, but um, we also read four pieces of scripture and contemplate them, and then we pray. So if you're joining us today and you're new, say hi down in that comment box. We'd love to say hi to you, and most people do watch this on the recorded version that happens anytime they want to watch afterwards, both here on the Facebook page and over on the YouTube channel. And all of our services and our special music and such is all available over there on that YouTube channel, Allen Park Presbyterian Church. So it is January 11th. Uh, it is a snowy, snowy January 11th here uh, in uh, in this Detroit area. We had an Alberta clip of Clipper come through, or in the process of coming through, so it's been snowing pretty steadily here, and it started to stick, but it's all supposed to warm up a little bit, and then, oh, we're supposed to get into some pretty significant snow, potentially, this weekend. It's one of those things. There's going to be a rain snow line, and where does it fall? We'll have to see, but we've been really blessed this winter uh, with with some light weather, so if you are got to go out today, be a little careful. I'm coming to you from my home office today because Meg has, uh, my wife has undergone some uh, foot surgery and um, we have our follow-up appointment with the surgeon today. So it was a week ago. All right. Oh, and Don and Katie are with us. And uh, I did talk to Don earlier today. They had to postpone his cataract surgery. So we'll continue to uh, pray for that. And uh, I know, Don, you haven't gone through it, but having had one of my eyes done, I was amazed at um, the ease with which they did it. And it wasn't nearly as um, as uh, terrible as I had made it out to be in my mind. I think anybody who's gone through the surgery will tell you the same thing about cataracts. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Judy. Hi, Nancy. And Larry and Carolyn Thomas are with us too. Very good. So we had, I got on a little bit early today. I've been running more towards eight, eight fifty-eight, eight fifty-nine. So hi, Norma. Good to see you. Kevin and Chris are with us too. Good to see you. So um, let's see. I wanted to go over here and and just take a look at what might be going on with the life of the church. Which if I go. To our website, www.allenparkpres.org, allenparkpress.org, because Presbyterian is hard to spell, so we just we just kept the easy part, just the P R E S. And today, and there, I under uh, those headlines, I can see that there is um, a, an active living calendar, and we can see that we've got some. Um, anything that's going on and it's Thursday so we're coming up into the weekend and I can see here that there's not a whole lot going on uh, within the church itself but on Friday we've got the good news which since I, this is my Friday almost but on Fridays we have Carrie Van our, our communications uh, director and um, Suzanne Maxey who actually has served just about in every function within the church as far as elders and deacons. And she is actually head of our Presbyterian woman too. So uh, they have their own show. 
And so watch that. The Good News, live at 9 a.m. All right. And then, of course, we're coming up into this weekend, and we encourage you to come uh, and worship with us. Uh, we'll have a full service at 10 o'clock, and if you can't show up, you can watch us online, both live and, well, you can watch the recorded version, too. All right. So, and we're having a baptism. We're having a baptism. So um, it'll be an exciting Sunday. All right. Let's see here. News of the world. I'm just, um, I'm going to tell you what, I'm not going to mention anything in specific because you can't look at it without at least finding one thing that is on incredibly, incredibly concerning. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of humanitarian crises occurring throughout the world. and We need to pray about them all. So that has been a lot of my studies. Um, my, my independent uh, studies that I've been doing is trying, trying to figure out how does God fit in uh, with the, all this terrible stuff. And I want to tell you that I'm not alone in that because um, that's a real common thing. If you have faith, you go, God, what's going on here? You know, where are you in this thing? So those questions are natural. And I think sometimes uh, the wrestling that we do with God over it is, uh, is really good. There's a name for it. It's called theodicy. You know, it's theo, and, and, but it's really about how we can understand that God is all we say that God is. Sovereign, above all, and all good, and all love, and then yet bad things happen in the world. So... You know, the, uh, one of the, uh, and out of bad things, some good things come. Um, and I will tell you that like out of World War I, that was the war to end all wars. And it brought a lot of theologians, people who study the Bible and say, and, and made them reassess, reassess the way that we receive that word. So, um, yeah, you know, we got to wrestle with stuff before we change it. All right, Tracy Crutz, hello. Carrie, thanks for putting that up. Hi, and uh, Kip is with us. Happy, happy Ken, too. So I'm going to move over here. It's 9.03. I'm on time. Wow, that hasn't happened in a long time. We always finish up on time. That's my gift in life. I babble uncontrollably, but I always finish on time. <laughs> so. All right. Hi, Joanne Butters. Good to see you. And again, as we go on through here, if you have a specific prayer request and would like to put it in that comment, whether you're watching live or afterwards, we'll get notification of those. But I'll also come back when we're done with our readings. And um, I will, uh, um, you know, harvest out those prayer concerns and see if we can't get to them. All right. There's a prayer button on our website, too. All right. Here we go. Our readings for January 11th. 2024 begin with Psalm 97. But the first thing I want to do is just pause and uh, center ourselves. I'm going to do a breathing exercise where I breathe in for five, hold it for five, and then exhale for that count of five. And if you'd like to, I encourage you to participate. Here we go. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. First reading, Psalm 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods, small g, bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad. And the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Small g. The Lord 
loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. Um, you know, uh, how we receive the Bible, um, you know, we always, we always pull truth from it, unless we botched it up, and that happens sometimes, but the chances of that happening when we, when we read it in community together uh, lessen. But um, I have to say that I've received it in different ways throughout my life, and I would uh, gather uh, a hunch here that you're the same way, um, because we pull out of the things that we're experiencing, right? If, we, if we're fear, uh, experiencing loneliness and desolation, you know, that's the lens with which we look through the scripture at saying, we're, what can I do to alleviate it or live through it, right? And um, so one of the things is, I, I, you know, there was a long time before I went to seminary that I didn't spend hardly any time in the Old Testament at all, just because it was so confusing. You know, and, and um, so some of the newer translations help me with that, but I find myself this growing, uh, incredible growing edge of myself that's coming to love a lot of the Old Testament. Um, and I'm glad that that's happening. But one of the things that's helped me is I understand more thoroughly the way that worship and the theology of the people of uh, Israel at that time. So you can see that there was, there's, Throughout these psalms, there's always references to other gods, and that's to people worshiping entities that aren't true. But it's also with, you know, could there be other heavenly beings? We talked about this yesterday. You know, and, and uh, where's angels? And we're going to hear about that with Hebrews as we go. And I bring that up because when we get to Hebrews, we need to understand that that letter is written to, to a community that is thoroughly Jewish. Right. And uh, so a lot of those. So the last thing I just want to say before we go on and read our next one is the representation of God in clouds. Right. Um, there is uh, uh, Shekinah glory um, is Shekinah is the Hebrew word. And it's this cloud that God speaks out of. And it's also the cloud um, that uh, accompanied. This was the presence of the Lord in this cloud. Um, and um, so it's been throughout scripture, and so it's Shekinah glory. And uh, it's kind of neat stuff because the Pentecostal church will oftentimes, um, you know, uh, in the midst of uh, their worship, will say, that, you know, the Shekinah is coming in, and that's what it means. It's that cloud of God is coming into the worship space. All right, so we're going to move on to Genesis, right? So we heard about, we're hearing about the Garden of Eden and the misbehavior there and Adam and Eve and they had kids and then Cain kills Abel and he gets thrown out further east, <laughs> right? And he goes to the land of Nod is, is what we know. But um, so he goes and this is kind of his story as he goes on. So we're going to read this. So this is the son of Adam and Eve, the surviving son who killed his brother and is cast out. Let's listen for the word of the Lord out of Genesis 4. Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and named it Enoch after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad was the father of Megajal, and Megajal was the father of Methushal, and Methushal the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other, Zila. Ada bore Jabel, I'm sorry, Jabel, and he was the ancestor of those who lived in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the ancestor of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Zila bore Tubacane, who made all kinds of bronze and iron tools. The sister of Tubacane was Nama. Lamech, Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Listen to what I say. 
I have killed a man for wounded me, a young man for striking me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy-sevenfold. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. At that time people began to invoke the name of the Lord. So in this reading of the word of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. So we're six, I think, five or six generations removed from um, Cain killing Abel. And Lamech uh, hasn't learned anything in those. He is this great, 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 great grandson. And he says, hey, Cain? He basically is bragging that he just, he tells his wives, look, I just killed an innocent man or, or, um, or perhaps two, right? I killed a man for wounded me and a young man for striking me. If, if my great, 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 great grandfather was avenged sevenfold, <laughs> well, I must have 77 fold coming to me. I mean, this is just a very arrogant statement. And uh, holding him up. So, and then we hear, so we're saying, wait, wait, wait a second. So this this blot, this sin, um, this failure to embrace what God wants is continued on. And who's going to, what's going to happen now? I mean, who's left? Well, God steps in. And Adam and Eve are allowed to have a son, Seth. At a very advanced age, another miraculous conception, right? All right, so that's Genesis. Now we're going to Hebrews. This is in the New Testament, and again, this is written to a Hebrew. So we're going to hear a little bit about uh, the continuation of this letter, which is, if it's not con trying to convince people, it's trying. It, it certainly is trying to. Um, correct the thought that might have been going through in this community about who Jesus was and what he does, okay, uh, that he's not a prophet. Um, we spent a lot of, so here we go. Let's just read it and see what happens. First 11 verses of Hebrews 3. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Therefore, brothers and sisters, holy partners in a heavenly calling, consider that Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. Yet Jesus is worthy of more glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now, Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that would be spoken later, Christ, however, was faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house, if we hold him, if we hold firm the confidence and the pride that belong to hope. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not burden your hearts in the rebellion, as on the day of testing in the wilderness where your ancestors put me to the test, though they had seen my works. For forty years, therefore, I was angry with that generation, and I said, they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. As in my anger I swore, they will not enter my rest. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. Well, thanks be to God. One of the things that speak at this, hey, this might be Paul himself, or at least he was speaking the words, and somebody was writing them down. This comes out of Isaiah, and we know that Paul uses Isaiah a lot. But again, it's this is the uh, the firm knowledge of saying where he's building on. His argument is, is you know, look, we know these things, and he's got to explain Jesus in, in the fact that it is the Messiah. It is the end. This is this is you know God breaking into the world, and he uses this thing as saying, hey Moses, great, you know. Um, you know, he served in the house of the Lord. Christ, right, was faithful over the house. 
and we are in his house. And if we remember that and keep our eyes firmly on that, if we hold that in confidence, and we rely completely on God, then we can be proud because our beliefs are based in faith and hope. I think, you know, that's the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing I think of, about, uh, about this one. We can be confident in our hope. And not, not confident in the hope that the resurrection occurs, but so confident in the resurrection that we live our lives as such, right? So it's not, it's not speaking about, oh, I hope that that resurrection is real. It's saying the resurrection is real right and I can live my life in a way that reflects that how would you change your life if you could if you say I'm not afraid of death uh, would you be a daredevil would we have a lot of evil Knievels well maybe we would just probably take a few more chances at letting go of some of our stuff and helping some others I think I think that would be a tremendous thing about it. Okay, let's read John. And uh, we're still in this first chapter. It's just chock full of stuff. We heard that preamble in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we hear about in the very, very beginning of creation, Jesus wasn't created. He was right there, right? And then the Spirit swept over the waters. We're going to hear those words again on Sunday when we, when we baptize. But... Um, so now he's, he's moving along and he's starting to, and he moves into this story of Jesus and he's talking about Jesus gathering up disciples, right? Including, we talk, heard about Andrew, right? Who was a disciple of John the Baptist. And he told his brother, Simon Peter. And um, so we're continuing on. So let's listen for the word of the Lord out of John 1, 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bathsheba, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him. He said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you? that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. Come and see. Right? We're going to eliminate disbelief by saying come and see and uh, so we've heard uh, this so we know that Philip was from Bethsaida which is also where Andrew and Peter that we had heard about just in the previous passages so Jesus's name was getting known and uh, so there you go and uh, and then Nathaniel gets called just a lot of excitement you know in the air now I'm not going to go any further with this because we are picking up this on Sunday. Come and see is the name of the sermon. And it has to do with uh, this passage. So enough of this. We're going to move on and, and uh, tell you to come and see on Sunday. All right. Let me go back here. Hi, Ellen. Yeah, I would imagine it's Stone and Frazier. And you guys hold on because I think there's an awful lot coming on Friday into Saturday for you too. All right. As always, thank you very much, Carrie, for putting up these readings for people to read along with. Um, you know, the only problems with readings is sometimes 
No, I'll, I'll be honest. We talked about interpretation. You know, I am making interpretations as I'm reading this, right? The inflections that I do. And, and um, sometimes they're very helpful to people. And sometimes they stand in the way. You know, you just, you know, God's word stands above all, right? But I think that if we understand that in many of this stuff, this is not just God speaking. It's got people responding and, and they respond emotionally. And I think that it helps us. It helps us to have that understanding when we when we read. Hi, Helen, you're not late. You're here with us. All right. I think I caught up with everybody and um, just going to pray. You know, we're going to pray for the people that we usually pray for, and uh, we're going to play for Tammy and Becky, of course. We want to um, gotta pull this out here just to make sure. And uh, we're going to continue to pray for Kathy Dawson, who is uh, Sue Hughes' sister. And uh, we continue to pray for Phil and all people who are undergoing treatments, medical treatments. Pray for Meg, right? I get taken her to the doctor. Hope she gets good, good, good news that she's healing well. Let's see. All right. But let's pray. Heavenly Lord, we ask you that our eyes might be opened, our hearts receptive, and our souls longing to have more of you in our lives. You've given us the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And Lord, we can see that there's an awful lot of tough things going on in the world. Sometimes they're right in the midst of our lives or the people that we love. And we struggle to understand the whys of those things. But yet when we read your scriptures, it helps us put our situations in a perspective that lets hope shine brightly. That illness and um, disease and death are not the end. But Lord, it does cause suffering. And your son Jesus told us in the Gospel of Matthew that when we employ ourselves to help relieve suffering wherever it exists, that we are living in your house and doing your will. So we do pray. We pray for the individuals that we might mentioned, but we pray for the world. We pray for ourselves. And Lord, uh, we give you thanks that if we reach out and we grasp a hold fully what it means to be a disciple of Christ, to be a disciple child of God, that that we can live our lives fuller and freer. And that we can see your grace in more of the things that we let ourselves do. And as we gather, we just ask that you provide safety to all in this uh, winter storm and the one to come, uh, and that you would safely be with us. Anybody who's traveling, that they'll get to their destinations and home safely. And Lord, through this all, through this all, let us know that you're right beside us. We ask this all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Amen, all. Hey, God bless you. As I said, Thursday's my Friday, right? So, got a lot of stuff going on. So, I, I'm going to be working. I'm sure <laughs> my day off, but right. I'm always going to take that time to look around and see it. I took the dog for a walk today and the snow was beautiful, right? I have to admit it was beautiful. And uh, so always just look, look for the grace of God, wherever you are, it's always there. All right. Remember this. God loves you. I love you. We all love you here at Allen Park Presbyterian Church. Let us show you how, if you're in need of something or prayer, you can always reach out. There's so many ways to get us. There's a prayer button right on the website, right? So you should just be, you know, overwhelming me with prayer requests because it comes to me and me alone. Nobody else sees it. And, well, some days I feel like the, world, the Maytag repairman, <laughs> as far as that goes. All right. God bless you all.
Have a great day in the Lord. Hope to see you Sunday. Tune in tomorrow for the Good News Live with Carrie and Suzanne at 9 a.m. Bye-bye.